Hey, brothers and sisters. I'm just hanging out in my car here, and I had some thinkings, so I thought I would share some food for thought real quick. Please excuse my voice. I have been dealing with a cold for a few days, so anyway, here's what I've been thinking, and I hope to get you thinking about as well. Everybody knows about this, this common sort of mantra that Jesus saved me just as I am. I know that that's one that I was used to hearing a lot and you probably are too. And over the past year or so, as we've studied these things uh, in my church and just as I've read through the scriptures, I see it less and less. It's, it's getting harder to prove that Jesus saved me just as I am. And so I want to talk about this because it brings me to the question of whether or not you've come to the beginning point of faith, the beginning point of true faith. See, because the reality is that Jesus died for me just as I am. That's true. This is why Jesus said, I will draw all men to myself. Paul said, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I. But Christ liveth in me. So the more we look into what it means that Jesus died for me, mm, there's a lot of false teaching out there that he was just the substitution for my death. I deserve to die. This is the beginning point of faith. It's also the offense of the cross. Because this message is so offensive to the flesh nature. The flesh wants to be saved. We want to be saved just as we are. Because we can't imagine ourselves any other way, of course. That's natural. But it's also self-exalting to be focused on Jesus saved me just as I am. Rather than Jesus died for me just as I am. And I died with him. See, when God placed his son onto that cross to die the death of Adam, that means he died the death you deserve. You have to see yourself as having hung on that cross, actually deserving of it. Everybody wants to be saved just as they are. This is very common in churchianity to believe this. But what's happening is they're skipping the cross. They're skipping the necessary death that God designed and, and, and they're entering in through another door. <laughs> Jesus talked about this. It's basically cheating, gets you nowhere. It's not true faith because you're holding on to your, your self identity. Jesus saved me just as I am. No, he killed you and he's going to start over with a whole new creation. And we've got to come to that point first, the death of the flesh, the death of me. The cross is not somewhere we go to be saved. The cross is a place for death. And then the empty tomb is where we find salvation. But this isn't really being taught in what I call churchianity. The resurrection is not being taught. All the focus is on heaven. I have another video about that, so whatever. But yeah, this 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 is something that I thought, yeah, I gotta I gotta ask people this. Have you come to the beginning point of true faith? Have you been believing that Jesus saved you just as you are? Or do you realize that the wages of sin is death? I, I'm going to die. This body is going to die. And the natural mindset that I possess that is always fighting against the spirit, that has to go. And that's why salvation comes after death. It's a whole new creation in Christ Jesus. That's what being born again is all about. We've received the spirit of adoption. But we're not born again until we've been born into 
new bodies unto like unto Christ's glorious body. And we are saved now. We are saved from the second death, but your body's still going to die. You're dying because the wages of sin is death. This is not popular. This is not the message that fills the seats in the churches because the churches today and increasingly so want to exalt the self. The scriptures tell us that the self needs to go. <laughs> so I really implore you to ask yourself, have I come to the beginning point of true faith? Have I have I be, have I been told that I am saved just because I believe? And skipped the death part, skipped the cross. You see, two malefactors hung on the cross next to Jesus, one on each side. The one had the attitude of, well, can't you save us just as we are? Get us down from here if you're the son of God. The second one said to him, dost thou not fear God? He said, we, we deserve to be here on this cross. And he's the one who had the attitude of Paul, I am crucified with Christ. And what did Christ say to him? Today you'll be with me in paradise. Salvation cannot come until we've gone to the cross first. And gone to the cross, as my pastor says, prostrate on the ground with a mouth full of dirt. Not this bending one knee to the Lord stuff, because that's, that's not true humility. In fact, let's just see ourselves on that cross where we deserve to be. Where God put us. He put us there at the time that he put his son there. That's why Jesus became the first Adam. Tomb, the empty tomb, after the fact. That's where we see the last Adam. And that's where we'll be born again. Let's not skip the beginning points. Let's remember that Jesus doesn't save you just as you are. He has to kill you and start over with a whole new creation. And that is so much better. I don't want to be saved just as I am. Because in and of myself, I'm a freaking mess. And if you're honest with yourself, so are you. It's a glorious thing that we can experience the death of the flesh and understand what God really did by putting his son there when he did it. See, everybody also focuses on Jesus having died for their sins. Well... He died for your sins in the fact that he died for your sin, your nature, your essence, what you are. Sin is about what you are. It's not about what you've done. I want to read to you from this wonderful little booklet. It's titled Our Life by Watchman Nee. Our inner eyes have to be opened. When Christ was crucified on the cross, God put our sins on Christ and crucified them on the cross. This is God's side of the work. Christ died for us and took our sins away. This occurred more than 1900 years ago and we believe it. Similarly, when Christ was crucified, God put us into Christ. Just as our sins were settled more than 1900 years ago, our person was also dealt with at the same time. When God laid our sins on Christ, he also put our person in Christ. On the cross, our sins were removed. On the cross, our person was also dealt with. We must remember Romans 6, 6, knowing this, that our old man has been crucified with him. We do not have to hope to be crucified with Christ. We have been crucified with him forever and unchangeably crucified with him. God has put us into Christ. When Christ died on the cross, we died on the cross. So this is all very liberating to contemplate. Because we can understand that the death of our flesh, and if we actually reckon it to be so, because God has said so, in our minds and in our hearts, we've mortified the deeds of the body. We've done what Paul has done in crucifying the flesh. And if we don't do this, then we keep the flesh alive. We keep the sin nature within us wanting to strive to be like God, which is in our nature, which comes from Lucifer. And if we're doing that, then the Holy Spirit cannot indwell us because there's been no death. You see, the Holy Spirit will only indwell after there's been a death. 
And if you're thinking that God saved you just as you are, well, you were born in trespasses and sins. It's not worth saving. God will save your soul and your spirit. But the flesh nature needs to go. And if you believe what God has done, that he's killed Adam on the cross, then that means he's killed you on the cross. And so I pray that this gets you thinking and rejoicing because wanting to be saved just as you are, that leaves a lot of room for legalism, for the flesh nature to want to try to figure out how to please God rather than rest knowing that the Holy Spirit in you will please God. That's all he can do. And you can just rejoice in what has, God has done. So ask yourself, have I come to the beginning point of true faith? Or am I wanting to be saved just as I am? This is a great thing to ponder. And so I had to share it with you. And I hope that it has edified you. And if your church is teaching these things, please let me know below because it's very refreshing. It's so refreshing to find out when... The truth of God is being is being taught, and uh, it's going to be more and more of a rare thing as time progresses. We know that. So, anyway, take care. I wish you the joy of the Spirit. Peace. <laughs>